Welcome back to Learn the Electrics. This Tech Tips video is about diversity and maximum demand in electrical installations and in particular domestic installations. We need to understand what diversity is and what maximum demand is. And we will be using data from Appendix A of the on-site guide to the 18th edition. The wiring regulations state that for economic and reliable design of an installation, the maximum demand shall be determined. And in determining the maximum demand, diversity may be taken into account. And diversity tells us that some circuits will not be fully loaded. If we add up all the circuit breakers in the consumer unit, it will easily come to 150 amps, 180 amps or even more and all this through a main fuse of only 100 amps. This can't be right. But applying diversity, we may find that the true load is only 80 or 90 amps. So let's begin. The on-site guide or OSG informs us that it is impossible to specify the appropriate diversity allowances for every type of installation and that every installation should be individually and separately assessed by the installation designer. There is no coverall formula for assessing maximum demand in all circumstances. And the examples in this video are just that, examples. Each real installation must be assessed independently and it is not that difficult if you follow a routine. Consider what factors affect the maximum demand in an installation. What about seasonal demands? A dwelling will use different appliances and equipment in winter when it was minus 10 degrees outside to what they used or didn't in summer when it was plus 30 degrees. The number of circuits is a big factor and the type of building and the intended use. The people living in the dwelling have their own unique lifestyle and they will use electricity in their own unique way. They will use different types of loads and run their lives to their own timetables. Consider also the main fuse and meter tails. What current are they actually rated to handle and are we overloading them? This is where diversity is very helpful. In this video, we are looking at installations in domestic dwellings only. Commercial and industrial premises have different diversity allowances which will be covered in a separate video. Any assessment of maximum load will make certain assumptions, such as the type of load, the times the loads are used, how many points of use are on the circuit, the equipment in the installation, and so on. Consider this. We have two identical houses next to each other. House number one is occupied by Emily, an elderly widow living alone. It is unlikely, therefore, that the shower and cooker will be used at the same time, for example. Lighting usage will probably be minimal and often only one room will be occupied at a time. She has storage heaters installed, running on a nighttime tariff. When assessing maximum demand for Emily's house, we should consider that the shower and the cooker are unlikely to be in use at the same time as there is only one person in the house. The storage heaters will be on during the night when the cooker and shower are not being used. Emily is unlikely to have DIY hobbies that might involve heavy electrical equipment. Bert lives next door. Bert lives with his wife and two teenage sons. And Bert is a motor mechanic and a weekend kit car racer. He spends most evenings in his garage welding all the broken parts from last week's races. When Bert comes home from work, he takes a shower whilst his wife prepares tea for everyone. The boys are usually playing computer games or making things in the garage. The demand in Bert's household is very different. The shower and cooker will be in use at the same time since Bert takes a shower as soon as he gets home. Cooking for four will probably mean that most of the cooker rings and the oven are in use. The boys have a very healthy appetite and they eat plenty. 
Evenings and weekends may be spent by all three menfolk in the garage, with welders, drills, etc. being used. And Mrs B spends most evenings baking cakes for the local food bank, often spending three or four hours in the kitchen each evening. I hope you can see from these two scenarios, which are actually based on fact, that you cannot just look at a certain size house from the outside and determine the diversity. You also need to know what is going on inside the house in order to make a more accurate assessment. Let's look at diversity in dwellings first and then consider demand. I begin by writing down what each circuit breaker is being used for in the consumer unit and make any relevant notes about that circuit. If our first circuit was a cooker circuit, I would want to know not only the size of the breaker, but also the power rating of the actual cooker. Once I know this, I can calculate the full load current for the cooker by using the power law equation at the bottom of this slide. Power in watts divided by the nominal voltage of 230 volts will give me the current in amps. Once I know the amps, I found the diversity for the cooker by doing the following. Take 10 amps of the rated current and then add 30% of the remainder to that 10 amps. And if there is a 13 amp socket on the cooker control unit, we add another 5 amps onto the calculation. Not 13 amps, just 5 amps. The socket will not be in use or drawing full load all the time. Here is the actual calculation. We have a 7 kilowatt cooker. 7 kilowatts is the same as 7000 watts. 7000 watts divided by 230 volts gives us 30.4 amps of current. The calculation is shown below. Take the first 10 amps, then 30% of the remaining 20.4 amps, which is 6.12 amps. And because we have an incorporated 13 amp socket, we add on another 5 amps. All that we need to do now is to just add up the three numbers. This gives us a total demand for the cooker circuit of just 21.12 amps. This is a lot different to the 32 amp circuit breaker. Diversity says that the assumed demand is 21 amps. Next on my list might be an electric shower. Again, what is the current rating of the shower? A clue might be the size of the circuit breaker. A 7 kilowatt shower should be protected by a 32 amp breaker and a 9 kilowatt shower by a 40 amp circuit breaker. A shower is considered to be an instantaneous type of water heater with thermostatic heat control. There is no diversity allowed for electric showers. So we calculate and use the full load current. If this was a 7 kilowatt shower, we can use the power law calculation. 7000 watts divided by 230 volts gives us 30.4 amps. The demand current to use is 30.4 amps with no diversity allowed. Next is lighting. And there may be two or three lighting circuits in the house. Calculate diversity for each lighting circuit separately. So how do we do this? In a dwelling, it is assumed that persons will turn lights off when they leave rooms. Only the occupied rooms will be lit. And we have an allowable diversity of 66% of the calculated full load current. We calculate full load by assuming that every bayonet or screw lamp holder is 100 watts, even if 60 watt lamps are installed. Add up the number of lighting points on the circuit and for every fluorescent lamp, we multiply the actual lamp rating by 1.8. Then add them all together to get a grand total in watts. Divide it by 230 volts to find the maximum amps and then multiply this amps number by 0 0.66, 66%, to give you the demand with diversity applied. In our lighting example, we will have five bayonet type light fittings. So assume 100 watts each, 
that is 500 watts. And we have two fluorescent lamps at 50 watts each. Two 50s are 100. Multiplied by 1.8 gives us 180 watts. The total then is 680 watts. Divide this by 230 volts and we have a full load current of 2.96 amps. Now, applying diversity, we multiply 2.96 by 0.66 and we have a new figure of 1.95 amps for that lighting circuit. If we look at the sockets, and it doesn't matter if it is a ring circuit or a radial circuit, follow the same method. Take each socket circuit separately. Decide for that circuit which piece of equipment will use the most power and take 100% of this value. Then determine what else is most frequently plugged in and used and allow 40% for each of these. Low power appliances that are used very infrequently can be left out. In our example we have the kitchen socket circuit. In use on a daily basis we might have a kettle, a toaster and a microwave. I will disregard the slow cooker. It's only used once a fortnight and only draws 100 watts. The kettle is easily a big user at 13 amps and frequently in use in my house. So we will allocate 13 amps to the kettle. For the toaster at 40% of 4 amps we have 1.6 amps. And we will include the microwave with 40% of 8 amps giving 3.2 amps. Add them up and diversity says to allow 17.8 amps for this circuit. If storage heaters were installed we would allow no diversity. So let's say 5 heaters at 3 kilowatts each. 3 kilowatts divided by 230 volts gives 13 amps each and 5 thirteens are 65 amps. But remember, they are only enabled during the night, say from midnight to 7am, when most other equipment is turned off. We can, therefore, calculate the daytime current as 0 amps and the nighttime current as 65 amps. And this will be important later when working out overall demand. Or maybe there are some permanently mounted room heaters hardwired into their own circuits not plugged into the sockets. Ordinarily they will not all be drawing current at the same time. The thermostat controllers will switch them on and off at different times. First we calculate maximum current for all heaters on the same circuit and add them together. Then take the first 10 amps and add 50% of the rest of the current. So if we have four 1.5 kilowatt wall mounted heaters, this is a total of six kilowatts and performing the power law calculation for current, we find that the full load current is 26 amps. Take the first 10 amps, then calculate 50% of the remaining 16 amps, which is eight amps, 10 amps plus eight amps. There is our answer. After diversity, we allow 18 amps for this circuit. Now that we have calculated diversity for individual circuits, we should put all this together to calculate the overall demand for the whole of the dwelling. The current demand for the dwelling can be determined by adding all the individual circuits together after making allowances for diversity and considering other appropriate factors such as same time usage, the occupant's life habits, seasonal fluctuations, etc. In this first example, write out what you know for each circuit like this. The name of the circuit, the circuit breaker size and the current demand for each circuit after applying diversity. This helps to highlight any circuit that has been missed. We can see here that if we just added together the breaker sizes, we will have 140 amps as potential full load. Clearly this is unacceptable which is why we look at the diversity column and check what we've allowed. The shower has no diversity applied but all the others do according to the calculations that we've made and they will be different for each dwelling. 
In this second example, we have a problem, which is where we have to apply some extra logic and common sense to our installation demand. Before diversity, adding up the breaker sizes, we have 190 amps, and after diversity, 120 amps. This is clearly in excess of the 100 amp main fuse installed in most dwellings. Is this going to be a problem? Look at this slide now. The same dwelling, the same numbers. But now we'll make adjustments for daytime and nighttime use. By moving the night storage heaters from the daytime, we can immediately see that the daytime usage is reduced to 81 amps, well below the rating of our 100 amp main fuse. In the night column, we have the storage heaters at 39 amps, and we have also sensibly included some small current for the lighting and socket circuits. People will read in the night, go to the toilet, etc. And the nighttime current is now 42 amps. So, day or night, the current demand for the property is well below the 100 amp main fuse rating. In summary, diversity is an assessment of what percentage of a circuit's connected loads will be drawing current at the same time. Some devices may be switched off of the switch, not in use. Others may be thermostatically controlled and switch on and off automatically at random intervals during the day. Each type of circuit, equipment or appliance has an approved diversity rating in Appendix A of the on-site guide. Demand is an assessment of the likely current usage of an installation. There is no set-in-stone system of assessment. Every installation is unique in its own demand requirements and it is up to the assessor or designer to use knowledge and common sense to make an assessment. Demand can vary between installations because of differences in living habits, number of occupants, seasonal variations, working hours, age of occupants, differences in day and night usage and many other factors. Make a written diversity assessment for every circuit that leaves the consumer unit. List the high current devices attached to the circuit, the number of lighting points, frequency of use, hours of use, etc. With a list of diversity adjusted calculations, the probable demand on the installation can be assessed. Make adjustments for day only and night only appliances, such as the cooker and the shower only being used in the daytime, and storage heaters only in use at night. Are certain circuits only used intermittently, for instance weekend DIYers? There are no set rules, just make a common sense assessment. And there we have it. We hope that you found this video from Learn the Electrics both useful and enjoyable, and that you have now added more knowledge to your mental toolbox. By clicking on subscribe below, you will have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us too and we do appreciate that small act. It does make us feel that our effort is worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.